uh, I think handing out a few places to disadvantaged uh, pupils is not the answer. It, the answer is to look at why those students are disadvantaged, solve those problems, mm. and and get the whole, you know, move that move that bracket out of existence. You know, don't have disadvantaged students. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to episode five of Maturing Cheddar with me, Ryan, and Lewis. Our other hosts, Hamill and Todd, are currently on, on vacation, so just the two of us today. Um, remember to find us on, on Spotify, Apple, and, and SoundCloud. So let's kick off what the earth is going on. So, Lewis, what were you talking about today? So, uh, yeah, hello, everyone. Um, my topic today, and I've been away for a couple of weeks, haven't I? But uh, this one's been on my brain for a while, and it's edu- the education scandal. So it's a it's an an old scandal as as of recording, but it's an interesting one, especially for our little podcast, as it were. So this education scandal uh, in the US um, it basically revolves around colleges in the US being exposed for allowing seemingly unrelated charitable donations to influence the process of college admissions. Now, um, this is pretty serious. So although although, um, people knew pretty much it was going off, and not just in the US, it goes on around the world, um, this like leak of information was like a a wake-up call to everyone of how, of how serious and how deep it goes um, to the point where, you know, examples include like SAT scores actually being changed to allow admission into uh, colleges. So uh, as people who have been educated in the higher education system uh, and all with differing backgrounds, uh, I know it's just me and you here, Ryan, uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to get uh, your views on it, and then obviously share my views on it, and then try and uh, try and look at what the bigger picture is around around that whole scandal. So, yeah, being in the US, uh, when did you first hear of it, and what did you think of it? Yeah, so I was, I think it. When did it kick up? Maybe was it about six months ago? Um, or it might have been a bit a bit earlier than that. I think it was a bit earlier, maybe uh, end of twenty eighteen. I think. Um, but it's it it's been such a, a, a complicated expo, expose that people are starting to go to prison. You know, getting getting charged in like kind of April time and April of this year, and then starting to go to prison now, etc. So yeah, it's going to be a lengthy one. I don't think we're out of the woods with it. Um, but yeah. I, think the, I mean, I think the public will absolutely, they love this story, right? Because <laughs> people are kind of the, the richest, the rich and the wealthy that are bringing, bringing, being brought down. And this is what, you know, kind of the average Joe in, in the public likes. I mean, just going back to kind of more about the case. So you said people were kind of cheating on the, you know, the SAT, the college entry exams, inflating their scores. And also there was this fabrication of, elite sports credentials so there was these these kids who basically had no sporting background at all <laughs> and their parents would pay like a football coach or like a hockey coach at the university to kind of say oh this kid's like really good at this sport we should let them in because they're good at the sport so those were the kind of the two main channels i think that they were they were using to get into into the college and then obviously the parents of, of these kids were paying, you know, fifty thousand dollars, sometimes even I think like a couple of hundred thousand dollars to, to the sport co- sports coaches to do this. Um, oh, well, I I, yeah. I I heard one where it was going into the millions. Uh, I heard that reported by the Wall Wall Street Journal. So it's crazy. Um, did, but do you think it was going on before? Like, first of all, did you did you think that was going on before firstly in the US and then around the world like let's say you know we've got Cambridge and Oxford here in in the UK like you've got these what do you call them Ivy League schools in yeah yeah the Ivy League kind of the top what 10-15 schools in the US 
Yeah. I mean, I think um, this stuff, I think so far there's been 51 cases, right? Yeah. This stuff just happens all the time. I think there's, there'll be, there's way more than 51 cases, but, you know, people just aren't, aren't finding out about them. Mm. But mm. whenever, like, you've got wealthy, like, wealth, wealth can pretty much get you, you know, nearly anything you want. So, I, I, mean, I definitely wasn't surprised when when I saw this. I don't think anyone was, was surprised, really, because realistically, this is this is what you expect. So, so why is it such a big deal, then? Why... I mean, first, is it a big deal to you? Do you actually care? Well, that's a good question. Like, does it directly impact me? Like, it doesn't really directly impact me, to be to be honest. But if you kind of think about it from, like, an equity standpoint, you know, maybe people who deserve a, a place in college, right, should yeah. be getting it instead of, you know, like a, someone from a wealthy family who's effectively buying their way the way in, so I kind of, I guess I kind of care from, from that standpoint. Um, but you know, so far there's only been 51 confirmed cases. So yeah, but do you think it's oh, well? Okay, I'll give my opinion on that then on that question. Do I care? Um, I definitely knew something was going off, and did I care? Probably not, because it's it's more it's more. Uh, is the word pandemic in the system uh it's more rooted in the in the way it works essentially you know people have a there's certain people in certain positions that have a big influence um so they have a big influence on the on the decision that gets made for admission so it was always going to be corruptible and do i care i i should care I definitely should care. It's very difficult to have too strong of an opinion when people, um, a, a lot of people knew it was going off and then when their eyes were a little bit opened, a bit wider, um, all of a sudden you have a, you have a movement of people who think, oh, we have to do something about this now. Uh, and it just, it, it, it always makes me question, well, let's just say a prosecutor, let's say, uh, makes me question, well, how much did you know before? And what, what suddenly tipped you over the edge? Is this just a, uh, not a marketing ploy, but, you know, just something that it's a vanity, uh, a, a vanity uh, action, just to make it look like we're doing something. Like you said, only 51 cases. Do you think there's actually only 51 cases going off in the world? Probably not. Um, or in the US, sorry. Um, yeah, I think there's kind of a, in terms of like one channel where the, the the fraudulent activity is going on, right, is where these people are bribing the sports coaches, right, to give them good elite sports credentials to, to get them into the college. But it's kind of, there's like a gray area between like this and, you know, families who would kind of donate a lot of money to a university, like to to build, you know, like an engineering center or something like that i feel like a family who donates money to university their kids would be more likely to be accepted into that university yeah so but, but that's that's legal right i would think um there's no like there's no bribery going on there it's just the university is like it's under pressure maybe to let that person in well I heard a story again. Well, uh, the journal. So, uh, an example is, like you said, there's one. Let's say you have a sports coach, or it's not even a sports coach. It's it's related. It's still related to admissions. So, someone gives a large donation to a charity, right? That's connected to the university in some way. I think. I think that's how I get it, and then. That that's fine, and then it might be a friend or a fa or a, a family member. Let's say a granddad donates that money, and then the request is made, isn't it? It's like, okay, they they're good at soccer, or you know, in serious cases they need. Oh well, they're good at soccer. Can you admit them based on their soccer results? And 
then I guess the sports coach has a decision to make. Does he does he accept or not? Based on performance, no. But then they might be put under pressure by the university who's getting that money basically and that money will be split between departments uh, and the departments are able to start negotiating and saying how they would best spend that money um, and when they've agreed all that they might just say right yeah admit that you know pressure that coach into like admitting admitting them through a through a scholarship uh, for, for soccer sports you know you know the soccer team so that's my basic understanding of one aspect of this. Like it went deeper than that. There's, there's more fraudulent examples of that. But, I mean, I'd say that's you're taking away a spot from someone who actually deserves it. In yeah, that sense. that's true. Um, yeah, and, but, but who's the fault? It, it, you're saying it's legal, but who's... I, I, and I, I, I'd pretty much... I don't know US law. I'd pretty much agree with you. Like... If you make a donation to a charity, you shouldn't get in trouble, right? Um, if the university then uses that don donation to, like, influence a decision of pressure a sports coach, coach that's illegal, mm. surely. And But how do you prove that? Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, that's fine. I think what's, like, not illegal is I th think some of the sports coaches... We're kind of doing this without the university knowing. They, the sports coach is just like receiving like half a million dollars cash directly from the parents. Oh. Just to effectively give that child like a, a letter, like a referral letter saying, yeah, this, this kid's good at that sport. We should let them in. And then the coach will like just pocket all that money and the kid will come in and the university won't really know anything about it. The university would just think, oh, that kid's probably going to be playing in that, that sports team. But the kid never does because the kid doesn't doesn't play that sport professionally, and mm. I think that's a problem, right? Whereas, yeah. kind of what we we're talking about, like donation to the university, where multiple departments like benefit can buy new equipment that can benefit all the students. That donation is fine, but I think with that donation, there's also kind of this kind of sketchy activity associated with people like the kids of those parents who are associated with those do donations, they probably have like favorable like admissions rates as well. Right. So the question is, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's illegal. The bribery with the, the sports coach is definitely illegal, but letting a kid in just because their parent is donating money, which I'm sure like definitely happens. This is more of like a blurred line. I would think. Yeah. It's a blurred line. And, and, Put yourself in the parent's shoes. You've got that money. Let's just, you know, just get away from any any controversy. You've earned it fairly. Why mm. would you not use it if you know it it works? Do you know what I mean? So my, let's get something clear here. For me personally, there's no beef with the people who are actually doing this, um, who are actually making the donation. If you had the money, why would you not give your child a leg up? Because your child is one of the most important things in your world that you'd give your child a leg up in my view so okay there's blurred lines but definitely i think the the university and then everything above that you know the system allows it to be blurred that's what you've got a question it's like okay we'll have this system in place because then we can still keep accepting these donations because the parents are going to going to keep paying um I'm sure. I'm sure if parents stopped paying, I don't know. I don't know. Well, they wouldn't, first of all, there wouldn't be an issue, and we wouldn't be talking about it. But um, I'm, I'm sure that if one or two people, if it was only one or two people who did it, those two people would be absolutely stamped out. Do you know what I mean in terms of legality and what they're trying yeah. to do? Yeah, I think it's it's completely rational what the parents are doing. Yeah, you know it's, it is illegal, but yeah, why not? You know, kind of invest now so your kid has the best potential future. But I think maybe kind of the society that we sometimes live in is this like anti-capitalist society where the rich like a started to become like a bit hated in society. So you know, 
as I was saying earlier, kind of your standard like middle income person will hate these people who can like pay just to get whatever they want. But if they were maybe in that position, they would do the same. So maybe there's some like hypocrisy going on there. But actually, one one important thing I do want to actually talk about, which I think it's really interesting with this topic, is so it's the it's the parents right of the child that's like pushing this pushing the kid to go to college and, and bribing and bribing the coaches and stuff like this. And that kid who may be like 16, 17, 18, they might not really be aware of what's really going on. You know, they're, right, they're, yeah. they're young. And I think in a few of these cases, because they've, they've come out kind of recently, so these kids are in their first or second year of college. And, you know, they've got a lot of hate from the students around them. And I don't know if maybe some of them have even, I don't know, expelled from college or they've been pushed out of, out of college effectively. But it's not really their fault, right? It's their parents. Mm. Mm. Like, it'd be interesting to, like, to get your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, well, actually being a... So in my position as a postgraduate researcher at university, I, um, I also... Uh, work to help younger generations of students by giving them advice, you know, just being there and giving them advice in, in, in lectures and actually in their first year residence. And uh, definitely some students who come, I see it every year, um, they come and they've got no idea what they're doing here. Really, you know, it's been, it's just been a linear progression they've got to do this they've got to get this grade they've got to get the a levels they've got to get, apply for a certain class of university and carry on and then they will be expected to get a job right um because that their parents know best surely like they've been brought up uh thinking that's 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 the case um and often these students are when they're put in a position where that linear ascension is challenged and they have to you know improvise or question what they're doing they usually run into problems uh in terms of you know it, it can be anything from academic performance you know even towards mental health which we've we've touched on already um and yeah it just it just strikes me that kids kids nowadays don't actually have enough of a chance and I don't know what actually I don't know what it was like back in the day but it seems like kids nowadays aren't questioning why they're doing something it's just kind of expected and uh, for that US system that you were talking about it's probably even worse because there's a lot of money riding on it right either way right the parents have probably been saving for 18 years to send their kid to college um, because the system's all different there. In Britain, we, we have a system where m most kids can get a loan, can't they? And have most of their fees covered, um, even if you have nothing. Uh, I'm not sure that if that's quite the same in the US. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't. I think kids come from a a very trusting standpoint, and the kids that can question. Why, why, why they're doing what they're doing tend to not really have an issue because they'll either just say no, maybe fight their, fight their parents on it, uh, or they'll just get on with it because that's actually what they want to do or they agree with their parents. The kids that you know, don't agree with what's going off, they're, gonna, they're ultimately going to struggle or get, like you say, get expelled, et cetera, et cetera, because they don't want to be there if you don't want to do something. And you're doing something that's quite hard. <laughs> you, you're going to struggle. Um, yeah, I was, I was also thinking, tying on to this, it. Okay, you've got the students, who, you know, maybe have been pushed into this by their parents, but look at it from the other way. What if the student really wants to go to that university, and the parents are just helping them along, right? Uh, is there a system in place that allows that student to get 
to get that on their own merit. And if they don't make it on their own merit, is the system too flimsy? Do you know what I mean? If and, and favors people who can make these charitable donations. Because uh, related to this is, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of this in in the UK. Uh, we have Oxbridge, which is Oxford and Cambridge universities, and um, I don't know if you remember Ryan. Way back when we were applying for university, the UCAS system, which yeah. is uh, a system which basically gives you a number of points based on the subjects you're undertaking, and um, Cambridge and Oxford. Do you remember they always asked you to? Uh, f they they basically filled their places f ahead of time, right? You basically put all your eggs in your one basket and said, "All right, I'm going to Cambridge," and you had to get with those results, no second chance, and you probably had to jump through more hoops, more. Um, if you were doing economics or a math-based subject, I remember you had to do a um, a, a, a an extra math. Uh, exam or two to yeah. get into Cambridge or Oxford so that has been they've they've now enrolled onto a system uh, where they will put up extra places for disadvantaged pupils for the first time now what that tells me is they weren't doing that before obviously and is that a problem should Cambridge and Univers uh, and Oxford be allowed to choose who they let in and vice versa should the students be able to choose whether they want to go to that university if they're if they're making that decision because i know that for me personally i don't want to sound sour about this um i didn't want to choose i chose not to go to or even apply to go to cambridge uh just because i literally thought i wouldn't fit in don't know if i'm wrong about that but um definitely it affected my the way I prepared for my A-levels and went about my A-levels because if you were going to Cambridge, you had to just start earlier, basically. You had to do some exams by the end of the first year that would tell you whether you were getting in or not. Um, whereas I feel like for a lot of the other universities, you, the, the real big exams are at the end of the, of the two-year A-level cycle. So I guess my question is there, do you, what do you think of the Oxbridge disadvantaged places and should they, well, I don't know. <laughs> should should they, they have them? Should they have them? Disadvantaged places in terms of you have to get, are they lowering their entry standards? No. Or I they're, they're just saying like X percent of a, like a side for disadvantaged people. Yeah, yeah. So I think you still have to do really well. And mm. uh, I, I believe there is an adjustment in place. Um, so maybe if you get a, an A, let's say, at a certain school, they may adjust that so that it's a higher A or an A star if you're on the borderline based on where you came from, this disadvantaged background. And there'll be a, around 100 places uh, for that adjustment to take place. And it'll only be uh, given to a disadvantaged, I say in quotation marks, uh, a mm. disadvantaged student. And I don't know what their... I haven't looked into it too deeply and into what their uh, policy is on that, but it's, it smacks me as, a, again, a little bit of a vanity project. Um, yeah. I don't know what the pressure is, why they've been, why they suddenly feel the need to do this. Um, but they had enough admissions. Um, yeah, so. <laughs> it's almost yeah. like, well, it's sounding harsh. Because I feel like the world is kind of heading that way. You know, it's like PR stunt kind of stuff. Mm. Right? It makes them look more, you know, equitable. Because like, I believe, you know, everything should be done, you know, you know, based on merit. So you you should have to get the entry requirements to get in. But then sometimes I do understand, you know, if you're... I mean, I was lucky myself. Like, before I went to college, I was, you know, out of grammar school. Which... You know, had good teachers and good education in general. So, do you want to but, just quickly explain what a grammar school is to 
Oh, are you a... Yeah, so grammar school is so it's, it's just a high school, but you have to take an entrance exam to get in into that school. Okay. Um, so they have like kind of in the southeast of England, they have a, cu- a couple of these grammar schools. Is it free? Yeah, and it's free as well. Yeah. So it's. I mean, I think it's a. It's a good system. Okay. But many people will disagree because then it causes you know, like the people of maybe like higher intellect to go to that school and it causes schools with really poor education system for those students who maybe didn't pass the entrance exam because they get clustered into certain schools um but anyway so i was i was lucky to go to to one of these schools but i can understand that if you maybe you don't have the chance to go to one of these schools or they don't have these schools in your area and you know you have you have bad teachers and it's just kind of a rough school in general, students are disruptive, then you're going to do worse in terms of grades. Yeah. Like, I think that's just, just reality. So you may be as smart and have the ability as someone in one of these grammar schools, but you don't have the same, you don't have the same opportunities to, to go to like Oxford and Cambridge. So that, this, disadvantaged background kind of segment that they're chopping off to give to people i can see if it's like aimed at in the aimed at those sort of cases I get, the problem I, is like where where do you stop yeah yeah that's it it's how, not sustainable how do you actually know if this person that you're letting in on lower standards maybe how do you know actually like officially that they have the same academic like qualification as as someone else you you don't know so that's the problem well my continuation of that is that i went to a comprehensive high school uh, or secondary school and um obviously we ended up at the same university right so mm. uh, i'm not saying every sorry i, I should qu- clarify that by saying a comprehensive in a big city uh so over five hundred thousand people which is a lot for uh, the UK, I, might, I know it might not be a lot for America. Um, uh, so a comprehensive high school that was ranked, when I joined there, it was literally ranked second lowest in that city out of many schools. And uh, we've ended up at the same university, and it's a good university that we ended up at. And we're both doing PhDs now. So I agree that if you're on merit, smart enough and able enough, you can not only uh, handle... Uh, the content that you're moving through, but you can also make decisions. It's partially about making decisions as well and not getting sucked into maybe things that, you know, are a bit more distracting, a bit more uh, uh, a, a what we call a disadvantage school. Um, there, were, there were definitely distractions where I was, but I managed to, thanks to my parents, I believe, keep, keep, keep out of them and stay on a, a track uh, whereas some people that I believe were at least as able as me and if not better better able than me decided or well for whatever reason didn't reach their potential and they've dropped off by the wayside do you know do you know what I mean so if I don't think the solution is to like just hand out a few places to disadvantaged students um, depending on what the definition of disadvantage is and my understanding of that word disadvantages is that you come from a background where they a school where the area and the school resources etc uh, mean that you're more likely to get a lower grade because it's not performing uh, I think handing out a few places to disadvantaged uh, pupils is not the answer it, the answer is to look at why those students are disadvantaged solve those problems mm. and, and get the whole you know, move that move that bracket out of existence. You know, don't have disadvantaged students have have those students have the same opportunity to go to a grammar school and start at, a, at an earlier earlier age and an earlier point rather than just putting a band aid over it and having people in Cambridge who, uh, you know, are being pushed into Cambridge, not pushed, sorry, but thrown into thrown into a vanity. Uh, system at Cambridge do you know what I mean um, so that yeah that's that's my view on it I mean yeah 
we could talk for hours. Could talk for hours about it. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I think people should have like equality of opportunity, mm. and it doesn't necessarily mean to lead to equality of outcomes, right? It's mm. it's kind of that idea. Maybe I'll give some like hate for that, but I think that's what what we're possibly saying there is find the root of the cause, give everyone kind of the equal opportunity to do something in life, but don't kind of force to have these disadvantaged background programs that are trying to force, you know, equal outcomes because equal outcomes may not, it's not necessarily the case. Just give everyone the equal opportunity and then let them decide once they have the opportunity to do what they want to actually choose, choose a college. Yeah. One last point I wanted to make about the disadvantaged, again, air quotes, disadvantaged label uh, from my understanding I've already given that but uh, one one thing that I don't know whether Cambridge and Oxford and other universities do this uh, I haven't really checked and I'm not going to check uh, one one uh, exception I would make is if for example I know I know a, 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 a young student who uh, like looks after their mom and parents now that's what I'd mm. call a disadvantaged student because they're literally caring for their mom um, so, in my eyes, he's disadvantaged because he, he, instead of going home and having a child, uh, you know, doing what we call a normal British child would do at 12 years old, he's going back, you know, helping his mum move around, doing shopping, etc., etc., this, that, and the other, doing stuff that a parent would usually be doing at that age rather than playing with uh, other kids and, you know, socialising and developing that side of his uh, himself. So, uh, I that's what I'd call a disadvantaged person and I'd be interested uh, to see those numbers, you know, see if the universities are catering for those people. But, you know, again, just reiterating, if disadvantaged means, oh, you come from an area that's not quite as privileged as this area, well, well, we'll give you a boost up then. Uh, That's not solving the problem. Uh, You're not not helping that area out. Are you just getting someone out of it and you're moving them into... You're probably just going to move them into a, into one of the already, aff, let's say, affluent areas and not disadvantaged areas, rather than fixing the area that is the problem. So this has been episode five of Matroy and Cheddar. I hope you guys um, have enjoyed it. We're always eager to you know find out your viewpoints. So please just share you know your viewpoints on the topics we we spoke about. Maybe it will uh, encourage us to have some future debates. Um, Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. And also we have you know Facebook page and Instagram page under Mature and Cheddar, which you can you know, voice your, your views about the episodes. Anyway, thank you, and please tune in next week. Right.